It is a blustery and a very rainy day here on Sanibel Island, Florida, but it looks like the worst of this hurricane, Dennis, is going to pass by offshore. We'll tell you what we can expect here for the rest of the day and right on into tomorrow with a live report in a moment. And check it right there. Many North Floridians getting out of the way. The first hurricane of the Atlantic season has slowed down some, but its impact already being felt in much of the southeastern U.S. on storm alert here at the Weather Channel. Good morning and thanks for joining us on this Saturday, July 9th. I'm Stephanie Abrams. And I'm Bill Keneally and Hurricane Dennis, as we call it, menacing the southwestern part of Florida. A wide-ranging system, so that entire right semicircle is now causing a lot of headaches there, even in the Tampa area. And Stephanie, here's the latest on Dennis. And by the way, a new advisory should be in very shortly. It is now about 110 miles west of Key West. It is pulling away from Key West. That is good news. Top winds are 100 miles per hour. It weakened some coming off land, then it strengthened up a little bit. Now it's kind of leveling out at 100, and hopefully it stays there. But indications are it may strengthen further before we do see another landfall. All right, so where is this storm heading to? That's the big question. Well, it will continue to track north and west and head towards places like Pensacola and Mobile on the coast of Mississippi. And you, you have to remember, where landfall occurs is obviously important, but the effects will be stretched far east, far west, and north of this system as well. And now that we have light of day, those folks in Key West getting a first look at the damage that was incurred by Dennis as it whipped over that island overnight. That's right. And this is a good point as the eye did not right. go over Key West, but the eye was just west of the island. And uh, Jeff Weinshear from WPLG uh, showed us what it was like. All night long, this wind has been pounding. In fact, the, the roof of our motel has been making some strange noises. We walked out this morning to try to get you this shot. We thought we'd see pieces of the roof in the parking lot, but to the credit to this construction, I'll tell you, this place is holding up extremely well. Again, damage from what we can see here, unbelievably, is minimal. It is right there, that best western sign that is down on the ground. It's a light next door. There are no broken windows in our motel, our hotel. Really, the damage here is trees and street signs. That is the very latest from Key West. I'm Jeff Weinseer. Back to you. All right, well, we're continuing to bring you team coverage throughout the morning of Hurricane Dennis. We want to take you live to Sanibel Island. That's where we join our own meteorologist, Jeff Morrow. And Jeff, currently you have sustained winds, really gusty there, a gust of 20 miles an hour, and also the rain. Now, in the last 24 hours, we've picked up almost four inches of rain in Fort Myers. Has there been any flooding problems there? Most of that fell, actually, uh, Stephanie, uh, last evening and overnight last night. We had some tremendous squall bands move through here and a lot of lightning, too, which was uh, maybe a little unusual for a hurricane. Typically, as you get toward the center more, you don't see a lot of that lightning. It's more in those outer bands, and that's what came through here. To answer your question, there was a little bit of maybe localized street flooding, but uh, didn't hear about any major flooding around Collier or Lee counties here. By the way, there aren't any mandatory evacuations here at the present time. Let's go ahead and show you the forecast. Uh, we may be getting missed by the, the worst of this hurricane, but I got to tell you, we're still going to get some pretty nasty weather for the rest of today. That includes Tampa here in Fort Myers. And of course, we just showed you what was going on in Key West. Conditions there will slowly improve as we head through the afternoon. Here, the worst of it will probably be through the afternoon hours as well. If we can come back to me now live, what I want to do is go ahead and show you the Gulf of Mexico. This is what it looks like here, folks. And if you look out across the water there, you can see Fort Myers Beach. There's some buildings across the water. You can see a lot of the white caps. Again, we don't often turn the camera into the wind like that because a lot of rain gets into the lens. But that was just a quick look to show you what the Gulf looks like here. It is chopped up. I would not want to be out there on a boat at the present time. And nobody should be swimming out in the water either. Rip current danger is a real, real threat. Of course, we'll keep you updated here. And in fact, I think we're going to be moving and we may join you from a different location a little bit later on today. We'll let you know. But right now, let's get back to Bill and Stephanie in the studio. All right. Now, as Jeff was just mentioning, he said that the camera has to face a certain direction. Yeah. So the rain doesn't go into the camera, but it goes into your face, doesn't it, Jeff? We need wipers out yeah, there. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. We'll check yeah, back well, in with you a little that's bit later. The business. That's right. All right, Jeff. Hang in there, buddy. The big storm is still out there. It looks like it is strengthening up. I want to show you the color enhanced satellite picture showing our core here. Note the purples near that center. That tells us these are colder cloud tops. 
and it looks as though that northern semicircle now has got some intensification going on. The eye, not real clear out there. It is kind of a muddy eye at this hour, but safe to say it's going to bring a whole lot of rain, and likely as it plies over these very warm waters, it'll strengthen further, I'm afraid. So right now it is a Category 2 hurricane. Top winds are 100 miles an hour. Sky Tracker shows us the rainfall now. Tornado watch up in Tampa and Orlando. Note that band of rain way up there by Crystal River. Right now things are okay around Panama City where Mike is and also out there where Jim is in the Pensacola Beach area. But that rain's starting to fill in. So around Apalachicola, here comes that rain. There's your center now pulling slowly away from Key West. There's that right semicircle we talked about having all the action, all that heavy rain. I want to show you now the bottom line real quickly of the storm. It likely will be further intensifying. There will be a landfall sometime later Sunday, maybe Sunday evening, in likelihood probably there in the Florida Panhandle. Stephanie. All right, don't go anywhere because after your local on the 8th, we are going to take you live to Panama City for a report from Mike Bettis. Well, hello, Stephanie. We are here live in Panama City Beach. Hurricane warnings in effect and mandatory evacuations. We'll have important phone numbers for you when we come back. Hurricane Dennis coverage continues right here on the Weather Channel. Where is everybody? Pensacola Beach is a ghost town as people across the Gulf Coast get out of Hurricane Dennis's way. Good afternoon from Mobile Bay in Mobile, Alabama. I'm meteorologist Mike Seidel. The evacuation continues. Everything is going uh, pretty smoothly so far. We'll check out what's going on, the latest updates, and the surge in tide potential here with Dennis as it approaches. And Dennis's winds have knocked out all power in Key West, Florida. More than three inches of rain has also triggered floods. Hi and welcome back. We are in storm alert here at the Weather Channel as Hurricane Dennis approaches the U.S. Gulf Coast. I'm Cheryl Lemke. And I'm Hillary Andrews. Dennis claimed the lives of at least 20 people when it roared through the Caribbean. Folks from Louisiana to Florida now nervously waiting to see where Dennis will strike again. And Floridians in particular are unnerved by Dennis in the wake of last year's thrashing by four hurricanes. And the state is seeing lots of nasty weather this morning as Dennis scrapes by. Here's our latest sky tracker radar and we are still seeing bands of heavier rain showers sweeping in across the state and of course to some gusty winds to accompany that rainfall. It may not be uncommon to see rainfall amounts ranging from four to eight inches as this tropical system continues to work its way up to the Gulf. A tornado struck near Tampa just earlier this morning. It sounded like the engines on a train that, you know, the whistling sound as they start, they start picking up speed. That's what it sounded like. Now, this is what it looked like after residents of Madeira Beach, Florida, heard that sound. Trees uprooted, roofs peeled away. There were three reports of tornadoes. This mother around the greater Tamp Tampa area this morning, rather, around the greater Tampa area. And here's the latest satellite imagery of uh, the hurricane. And we've Actually, got some. We're going to. There's your latest satellite there imagery. There we go. We can see the brighter shades of purples and red showing us still some very deep convection. It appears as if the hurricane has been fluctuating somewhat in intensity, but with all that deep convection, there's still a chance that some strengthening could be taking place as we continue throughout the day. Hillary? Well, our team coverage of Hurricane Dennis begins this hour with Mike Seidel. And Mike, what is Interstate 10 looking like with all those mandatory evacuations? Hillary, it's looking a lot better now than it did this time yesterday. Yesterday, it was bumper to bumper. They were averaging about 5 to 10 miles an hour. Looking over there right now, everything is uh, traveling smoothly. Uh, primarily yesterday, the issue was westbound. A lot of travelers, a lot of residents and tourists getting out of the Florida Panhandle, out of Pensacola, Panama City Beach, and Destin. It seems that everybody left early, and that's a good thing, so we don't have the roadways clogged. Let's talk about the mandatory evacuations here in the two coastal counties of Alabama, Mobile County and also in Baldwin County. Here in Mobile County, it's a mandatory evacuation. That got underway this morning at 6 a.m. for the entire county. In Baldwin County, across Mobile Bay, that's just east of here, it's a mandatory evacuation for all areas south of Interstate 10. And what they've done is they've turned Interstate 65 around, so it's four lanes northbound from exit 22 near Stockton all the way just south of Montgomery. So all four lanes heading away from the coast so people can either go up that way or they can take I-10 west into Louisiana. You get far enough west and you're certainly going to be out of harm's way. Take a look at the tides. 
Now here along the Gulf Coast and here in Mobile, there's not much of a tide. It's about a foot. So unlike a lot of the East Coast beaches, when we're really concerned about when landfall is at time of high tide versus low tide, it really doesn't matter here. It's a one foot uh, tidal variation. High tides are going to be occurring uh, one, two o'clock in the morning the next couple of nights. So, uh, Hillary, there it is, a beautiful sunny day. Uh, no signs on the horizon of the clouds yet, but things obviously will go downhill very quickly tonight and tomorrow here in southern Alabama. Thanks, Mike. And, of course, we'll check in with you to see the changing weather. Cheryl. Well, enough is enough. That's what residents of Pensacola Beach are saying. They've barely recovered from Hurricane Ivan, and now they're staring Dennis right in the face. Our storm tracker, Jim Cantori, has more from Pensacola Beach. We are expecting a direct hit from Dennis here at Pensacola Beach. As you look out to the Gulf of Mexico, just a few white caps starting to show up now on what was a very calm Gulf yesterday. And quite frankly, it's still calm in comparison to what we've seen lately. Out at that end of that pier, remember Ivan? The waves are breaking over the top of it. We expect a similar batch of wave action coming in with the surge, which will come up very suddenly with this. Look at this hotel, condemned since Ivan. Big hole in the roof. What does that mean? More wind and rain going in? This thing will be condemned and obviously have to be torn down at some point. It's going to be very much uh, beyond repair. So a lot of problems still from Ivan, and unfortunately, adding on top of that, Dennis as well. Back to you. Here in Panama City Beach, all eyes are firmly focused on Dennis. A lot of concern here because this area went through Hurricane Ivan last year. It was a destructive hurricane. We're hoping that outcome is not the same this year with Dennis. A lot of folks here this morning down on the beaches, a little bit of light wind, but many folks taking in one last bit of water before they're evacuating and heading farther inland into Alabama as well as Georgia. They'll be waiting in long lines as they make their way inland and try to escape Dennis's wrath. Hurricane warnings in effect here along the Gulf Coast, including Panama City and Panama City Beach. Mandatory evacuations have now been ordered for all of the beaches. Reporting from Panama City Beach, I'm meteorologist Mike Bettis. And of course, we'll check back in with them through the afternoon. And of course, Hurricane Dennis is still wreaking havoc over southern Florida. At one point, we had peak wind gusts for Key West up to 74 miles per hour. We're still seeing some pretty breezy weather, though. Right now, sustained winds for Key West over 50 miles per hour. And the winds are picking up, too, as we continue to head northward in the Gulf. Yeah, the very latest puts... Uh Dennis, 135 miles west of Key West, Florida, about 465 miles south-southeast of Apalachicola, Florida. Keep in mind, we have seen Dennis weaken after the 150-mile-per-hour winds in Cuba, but this is still a formidable hurricane. This program was...